Shoot the front one. Shoot the front one. This is a review on the Gearson MC1911S tactical model with the 5 inch barrel. Um, this is a full size government model. And uh, just wanted to uh, go about doing a little bit of a uh, kind of a. It's going to be a combination of a review of the weapon, um, a range report, as well as a warranty return. So. Um, those of you interested in this gun will probably find this useful. Uh, let's just get started right away. So, um, came in this uh, pretty nice box here. Pretty nice plastic box, good for taking to the range anyway. Uh, here is the firearm itself. Um, I've got a pair of Hogue rubber grips on it. Um, I like the feel of the Hogue uh, on a lot of guns actually. I have one on my uh, AK as well. I do like the feel of these. Um, they do thicken out the width of the grip, so if that's not something you like, then I would stay away from them. But uh, the original grips that came with the gun um, are these wooden, uh, apparently Turkish walnut, according to Bud's. Uh, Bud's guns, they are just drenched in lacquer, so they have a little bit of a plasticky look. Um, but they are definitely wood, as you can see. Hopefully you can see on the camera. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, fit and finish is great on the gun. Uh, we've got an empty weapon, totally clear. No mag in. Um, throw the safety on for you. A uh, couple things I noticed once I got it uh, immediately. Slide to frame fit is remarkably tight. Um, got a little bit of wear here on the slide where it meets the frame. I think that has to do with the fact that it is very tight, uh, but that's okay. I'd rather have a little bit of wear on the slide than have a uh, frame that, you know, was loose. So, uh, anyway, that's a really good good thing there. Um, what else do we have going on? We've got a little bit of play in the trigger. Um, not sure if you can see it, but a little bit of play in the trigger. The um, not not noticing that while shooting it, um, not really sure why, but it doesn't seem to play any part in it. I'd say the trigger is probably a about a four pound trigger. Um, as I'm breaking it in, the it's getting a little bit more crisp. The break is getting more crisp, it's crisp. So I do notice that the trigger is breaking in a little bit. The beaver tail safety is a little loose. It kind of rattles when you shake the gun not too pleased with that but uh, again it's a you know four hundred dollar nineteen eleven so uh, to be expected the fit and finish wouldn't be perfect but it's much better than I expected the uh, frame very smooth uh, very smooth frame uh, got the um, Novak style rear sights here with the white dots front does not match and uh, I'll get into that pretty soon. Part of the reason I'm going to be sending it back. Uh, the warranty is if you look at the front sight blade you'll notice it's a pretty tall blade. Um, look at the profile of the gun you can see that. Uh, you can actually see that the front sight doesn't necessarily match the rear. It is a tall front sight blade and a little bit too tall. So uh, the main reason I'm sending it back is the gun is shooting about three inches low at uh, 10 yards and that's simply because of that tall front blade uh, I talked to a couple other people that bought the gun more recently than I, I bought mine about uh, three weeks ago but um, the people that seem to be getting their new models in now have a uh, shortened front blade so it appears that Buds or Gearson noticed this issue and have um, taken care of it so I'll be sending this one back in hopes to get that new front shorter blade Obviously, I could do the work myself, but why not have it directly from the factory instead of having to file anything down? And uh, anyway, just thought you might want to know about that one. So I will be sending it back. Buds uh, actually just sent me uh, some warranty paperwork. They also sent me a prepaid label, which is a next day air UPS, so that's a pretty good deal. Uh, I'm going to get back to them, and I'm going to hope that they don't send me a new... I'm going to hope they don't send me a new gun with a new serial number because I don't want to go through the process of... Uh, going back to my FFL, paying another $25 transfer fee, but 
uh, again, I still think it's worth it. If I can have you know the gun as, as good as it is right now with a with a better front sight, I'm happy with that. Uh, Act Mag that comes with it's really cheap. Um, did function well. Uh, just quick quick range report on this. I've also got the Colt eight round mag, uh, stainless, just kind of base model, uh, non removable base. Uh, Act mag that comes with it is also eight rounds. I had uh, out of a hundred rounds, I fired PMC brass and uh, RWS, um, uh, the RWS brass as well. I had two failures to eject uh, through the hundred rounds, and uh, one of them was I think due to limp wristing. We had some of the girls shooting it, and uh, one of them was a limp wristing that was. Uh, that happened with the Colt mag, and then we had another one. We were shooting it, and the uh, Act mag uh, had a hiccup. It wasn't the first or the last round, so I don't think it had anything to do with that. It just seemed to be kind of a random uh, failure to eject, and we got kind of a stovepipe there. So uh, let's get back to um, uh, things I do. Uh, like about uh, the gun considering it's a budget 1911 things I wouldn't normally expect on a budget 1911 is a bar cast slide um, it appears to be really high quality got a cold forged barrel um, also seems to be of great quality the gun was very accurate at the range it was shooting approximately one inch groups at uh, at 10 at 10 yards and um, you know, I, I, I'm pretty impressed with that, I, I, I will say. I, I didn't expect that to be the case. Unfortunately, that group is about three inches low. So uh, once the front blade gets repaired, that should be taken care of. Again, I'm hoping they don't send me a brand new firearm. But uh, as I do kind of, I'm pretty happy with this one as is. So uh, just keeping my fingers crossed on that. Uh, also, the uh, frame is an investment cast, which also uh, find to be... You know, very good deal considering. Um, slide re uh, magazine release was pretty stiff when I first got it. It was actually almost almost impossible to push with your thumb while you had your hand on the grip. You almost had to take another finger and push it down. But I got some good oil in there, and that seemed to loosen up pretty quickly. Uh, I did also put um, some grease in areas where I saw a little bit of excess wear, which was on the slide stop. I hear people having a lot of issues with the slide stop um, with the mag in, empty mag in, empty mag in, slide locks back and then it takes a little bit of effort to close this so you know I wouldn't really say that that is the best way to close the slide to be honest um, especially on an, on an empty gun, you don't really want to slam the, the slide forward like that. But I would just say the easiest way to do it is to just, when you got a new mag in, is just pull it back um, and kind of slingshot it forward. But, you know, a lot of people do prefer to just let it go with the slide stop. So that's kind of personal preference. Um, I hear a lot of the tactical schools actually train not to close the uh, slide with the slide stop. Um, Something about um, something about motor skills in the in the heat of a gun battle or something like that. It's apparently much more simple to just uh, you know let the slide go from here as opposed to doing this. I'm I'm not really sure what what the whole status is on that. But uh, uh, let's see what else do we have left. I think that's pretty much it. Um, again, Novak style rear sights. Really nice. Uh, really nice rear sights. Unfortunately, it doesn't match the front sight. It's got a um, it doesn't have a white dot on the front seat sight, so as you can see here, uh, would be advantageous to be able to get a front sight in with uh, with a white dot to match. Um, although I will say that uh, I've looked into doing this through a few different methods, and from what I understand, uh, spoke to Novak Sights, they would uh, be doing some milling uh, in the dovetails to get their sights to fit. So. You know, you're looking at pr approximately $120 to get the front sight uh, milled, installed, and you know you're still you still haven't even started talking about um, 
you know, shipping, return shipping there and back. So uh, that could get pretty expensive just for a front sight um, repair. I am considering potentially trying, once I get the new sight, to get a white dot installed on the front. Um, potentially by doing that myself. I'm, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that, but that's something I'm considering. Uh, otherwise, I, I will say the gun is fantastic for the money. I mean, it really, really is. I think it's uh, it's certainly comparable to uh, uh, to the Rock Island Armories or the um, any of those guns currently coming out of the Philippines right now. I'd say Turkey's doing a fantastic job. They have uh, contracts, military contracts. This particular company, Gearson, uh, with uh, with a handful of different uh, countries. I, I think you know, obviously, including Turkey itself. Uh, I'll have to brush up my knowledge on that. I know I read a little bit about it somewhere, but um, not to get too far off topic here. Um, we'll be probably sending it back today. I do have a range, uh, some range footage of us shooting the gun. Uh, I'll put that up shortly, so please subscribe to be notified when uh, when I release that footage. And um, uh, feel free to reach out with any questions. Uh, hopefully, I didn't leave anything out, but I will be back and kind of give you an update once I get the new gun back or the new front sight back. We'll see how that goes. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and uh, please reach out with any questions. Thank you. So here it is, back in uh, original form. This is how it came, uh, brand new. Uh, with the manual, uh, a couple cleaning uh, brushes, brass, and uh, just standard standard brush, and then it's also got the uh, breakdown tool. Uh, put the original grips back on. Uh, send it off with the mag it came with. So just sending it back exactly as it came. Uh, again, hoping for the best. Uh, one other thing I didn't really mention in that uh, in the previous video was that, um, or uh, the previous segment that I. Uh, uh, had a little bit of trouble with the takedown pin. The um, slide stop pin was giving me a little bit of trouble. Um, first couple times taking the gun down, uh, it's kind of hard to get out. I had to use something to pry it, and then also to get it back in, it was a little bit tricky. But I think after the first couple times, I'm I'm suspecting that maybe some of the parkerized finish comes off, and it just gets easier to work with. So if you do have that issue, don't. Uh, don't freak out about it. It's not worth sending the gun back. You just it's it's a little sensitive, and you kind of got to work it back in. So um, I know that that's a pretty common issue on on slide stop pins with uh, with certain 1911s, but this is um, you know pretty low tolerance uh, fit. So give it a little bit of time. Uh, I think that's about it. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, again, make sure if you do have the gun, you put good grease in the spots where there is some wear and tear. Uh, where the slide stop pin meets the slide, I'd suggest is a really good spot to put uh, put some grease on just to keep any excess wear from happening. Thank you.